Okay, hi. So I'm Samian. I'm <coughs> I'll be presenting about Trubit stable computation token. It's joint it is joint work with Jason Toits, he's here also. And Surya Paxi. First, I'll try, try to explain the basic properties of the Trubit system. The idea is that it's possible to use interactive proofs to verify computations. In particular, if an honest and dis dishonest participant disagree on the result of a computation, an interactive protocol can be used to show that the honest participant <coughs> was correct. And in practice, this means that some users will post the res results of the computations and some others called the verifiers, they will then try to detect errors. And this, this, kind, this kind of interactive proofs, they are called fraud proofs. So the first economic property is that when computations are verified using these fraud proofs, we get a version of the tragedy of commons when no man, one process checking actually the correctness. And the reason why this might happen is that everybody will just assume that the computation is correct. Well, and this would happen if if, if beforehand it, it has always been correct. So, so we have to have some method to prevent that. And so, so the purpose of the Drupit incentive layer is that when posting a task, also enough rewards are posted so that the solvers have incentives to check the computation. And for the rewards to be useful, we must require that only sol solvers that have made deposits can participate, otherwise the rewards are not predictable. Okay, let's summarize some basic concepts from Trubit that are needed. So we are building a system where users are able to buy computation tasks for scaling up smart contracts. This means that there are two kinds of actors in the system. First are called the task givers. They just want to perform verified computation in the blockchain. Then there are solvers and verifiers who will perform the computation and ensure its correctness. Correspondingly, there are two possible tokens. First CPU token is for issuing task. This one is the stable token. And true token is for deposits or staking, and it's used by the solvers and verifiers. So, And there was supposed to be, be a picture, but looks like it wasn't updated after all, so. So. There are two, two input up done properties that the CPU token should have. So first with the stable to token, you can buy one computation task so one token corresponds to one task and using the token you can post the task on chain but so it's not enough just to post the ta task on chain we just we also need another property this is this is that once you have the token you can always expect there to be a solver and this so solver will then post the solution to the task that was posted to the task book. And also, so, 
So as a starting point for this table token design, we can consider some kinds of like a futures contracts. The way, way this contract would work in our case is that first the solver sells a future to the task giver. Then the task giver can post a task using the future anytime it wants to. And when this happens, the future is converted to the market price by the solver who sold the future. And then the task is post posted with an appropriate price. So note that it's not just enough for the security of the system to just have the solver who posted the task to post the solution because in that case it's not guaranteed that there are verifiers. So instead the solver can then solve some other task or just some task and get get the market price that it just like gave in the Get, get the same price that it just converted it the future to. So, so this construct has some promising features, but there remain some difficulties. One is that there is no real real market price. Solvers just have to determine some price, perhaps by voting, but the reason there is no, no market price is that if the solvers would co compete with each other, then the actual price might be too low, so then there would, not, would be no verifiers. And also a problem is that so the solvers will need a deposit to force them to make the futures conversion. Otherwise, they they could just sell, sell the future and they would, wouldn't have to do anything. So the stable token, it corresponds directly to a computation task. And the, the model using the stable token, it's as follows. First, the solvers sell the tokens to the task givers, and then the task givers use the tokens to post task, and then the solvers get the tokens back when they solve the task, and then we are back in the origin, original state, and the solvers can start selling the tokens again. Then the other part where of the system where we need some kind of tokens are the deposits. And the question now is like what, what is the relationship between the CPU tokens and the deposits? So the value of the deposit it has to be enough to cover the cost of interactive verification and in practice this might mean that, well, at least, uh, okay. So it is the true bit interactive verification that it's the part where if, if the, if to, if, if the, if an honest and dishonest participant, if they disagree on the computation result and they enter into this interactive verification where they find, find out the exact point of disagreement and then, then once that point has been found then they will then they can post it to post it on chain and you can see which one was wrong. So let's consider what this tokenization of deposits would mean. So 
in, the, in this case, the deposits can only be made in a special token called the true token. So now the stakeholders of the system own, own true tokens and the total, so now the total value of true tokens can be considered to represent the expected profits from the system. Solvers will be the owners of these tokens and the more true tokens they own, well, the more tasks they can solve. And to get the actual value of the true tokens, you, you have to subtract the value of the system or subtract the value of the CPU tokens from the system. So the CPU tokens are kind of like, they have all already been sold, so. So how, how can we create CPU tokens? Well, first of all, perhaps we just make them all, all beforehand, but might be useful to have a dynamic amount of tokens. So also we don't want the tokens to be scarce because that would drive their value upward and this is not a good feature for stable token. So they can be created from true tokens and so the basic idea is just that the true tokens, they can be, no, the CPU tokens, they can be minted from, by using true tokens in, in the market price. And well, this re requires that the, both CPU and true tokens, they are like some, somehow liquid tokens. And well, Perhaps they can also be created from some other, other tokens, but then they would have to be put in some kind of a fund where they would in increase the value of the system. So, um, let's try to explain this, how to get how to get the market price. Well, we are just using to tokens that are on chain, so this is actually quite simple. So one, one approach would be to use external or oracles, but this is not necessary here. And another possibility would be to get the value from some kind of distributed exchange, but we can simplify this so that we don't have an actual exchange but get the correct values anyway. So the idea is that the Oracle will post for the, for the to token pair uh, the amounts that are supposed to be the same. And if some monitor sends the matching amount of the first token, it will get the second tokens or vice versa. So if no, but if no, there is no monitor, then we can assume that this was a good enough Oracle price. Well. And there is still, still some time, but perhaps we'll just take questions now. Okay. I think there, there, there is still start some time, but perhaps we'll just take questions now. So. Does 
So why are there two tokens, the CPU token and the true token? So the first token is the CPU token. This is like for posting the task and the true token, it's what's taking in the system. So, well, it's possible to have just the CPU token and then it could be used for the deposit. So, so it's not absolutely necessary to have two tokens for this mechanism to work. But if you want to have a, a d d dynamic amount of tokens, then we need the true tokens because if we, if we would have a, like a fund or some other method that's used to control uh, the price, so if if the if the fund if the, if it, its value goes down, then the if there are only CPU tokens, then the value of CPU tokens should go down, but the, we want to keep them stable, so there is this another token that kind of it, it, it can provide some st more stability then.